Hello everyone, welcome again. In this lecture, we are going to start our uh, second last topic, which is corporation tax. Only one topic is left after that, which is value added tax, which is just a minor topic. Now, corporation tax is another huge topic. Uh, so, first major topic was income tax, on which we have spent lots and lots of days. And uh, corporation tax is the second biggest topic in ACCP6 taxation. Now, some tutors start with corporation tax when they start teaching. Uh, I used to start with corporation tax as well a few years ago uh, when I was teaching this subject uh, at a local institute. So, uh, so if I would have started with corporation tax, then I would have spent a lot of time uh, teaching you bits and pieces of corporation tax because it would be our first topic to start with P6. Uh, whereas in uh, you know this uh, you know way of teaching, a uh, recorded teaching way with accountancy tube, I started with the uh, income tax first. So when I started with income tax first, that's why I spent a lot of time teaching you income tax because uh, it was our first topic, so most of the bits and pieces you did not know about. So that's why I explained it in as much detail as I can. So that I can spend less time on other topics like corporation tax, which we are going to start now. Now, although corporation tax is also another huge topic, but we won't be spending much time I will be sp spending a little time on corporation tax uh, because almost everything is exactly the same which we have seen in uh, income tax so we won't be spending much time studying corporation tax like the name says corporation tax so it is on the company so when companies make profit they will have to pay corporation tax uh, so there are different things to uh, deal with it so we'll see our notes now so that we can uh, start our uh, another big topic if you come to page number 78 of your lecture notes, please. <coughs> Excuse me, page number 78 of your lecture notes, as you can see on your screen. So there are about six chapters uh, on corporation tax, but uh, you know it will go like like a second, and because we will be spending a very little time, most of the things we have already seen. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So, corporation tax, as you can see on your screen. So, that is the form of corporation tax. Uh, now, corporation tax is uh, paid according to accounting profits. So, that's why it says uh, accounting profit. So, first of all, we take, uh, take trading profits, uh, and then we take interest income, property income, and capital gains. Uh, we deduct uh, charitable donations uh, out of that, which, is, which are qualifying charitable donations. So, if uh, anything is paid to the charity that will be deducted out of this total and after that it is a uh, you know, profit on which we have to pay tax it is called a taxable total profit. Corporation tax rate is at the rate of 20% so it is a standard rate at the rate of 20% and, uh, and that's it for our corporation tax uh, format. After that it t tells you little things about the uh, about the you know titles which we have uh, just seen in our format like trading income and all that First of uh, which is uh, dividends income. Now companies do not have to pay uh, tax on uh, dividends if they receive from any other company, even if it is UK or uh, overseas company. So if they receive any dividends, they don't have to pay any tax. After that, it says uh, interest income. Uh, interest income is it says received gross, uh, no grossing up needed. So uh, basically, in in the previous finance act, we used to gross up for income tax purposes so that's why it says income needs grossing up however in this finance act income tax as well as corporation tax does not need grossing up so you know in corporation tax as well there is no grossing up needed in the previous finance act it was exactly the same way um, but uh, income tax was a bit different because it was received net uh, however in this finance act we need to grow uh, we we receive the income interest income gross in our income income tax However, we are studying corporation tax, so interest income is received gross. Now, if it, it says uh, if companies pay interest, uh, if companies pay interest on loan other than for trade purposes, so if a company took a loan and they use that loan for non-trade purposes, and then it, uh, the interest paid on that, it will be non-trade loan relationship. Now, interest paid on that will be deducted out of the interest income. Please remember that the interest, if we, if we took a loan, and I have used that loan for trade purposes, not non-trade. I used that loan for trade purposes this time. 
Now interest paid on that loan will be deducted out of the trading profits. So if it is for trade purposes, it will be deducted out of the trade profits. If it, for, it is for non-trade purposes, uh, then it will be deducted out of the interest income. So that's what it says in the notes as well. Right, after that it says uh, trading profits. Uh, good news is that we don't have to deal with the uh, you know, basis period in this one. Uh, and the capital allowances are exactly the same way as well. Profit adjustment is exactly the same way. Uh, however, in capital allowances, there is only one minor thing, that there won't be any cars with private use section. Remember, if there is car with private use, we used to make a separate column of that in capital allowances. We won't do this for the companies because remember that private use of anything is private use by the owner, right? Private use by the proprietor. Whereas in companies, the uh, proper, uh, proprietor and the owners are the shareholders. Shareholders are not in the company anyway, so there won't be any private use. If it is private use by the employee, if it's private use by the director, it is expense of the company, so it is not private use basically. It is not pro private use by the proprietor. So that's why we don't take private use. Um, you know, we, we won't make a separate column for that. Uh, interest, uh, sorry, uh, property income and capital gains are exactly the same way as we have seen earlier. Remember, in capital gains tax, we won't get any annual exempt amount for companies. However, what we get for companies is indexation allowance, you're right. Right then, on page number 79, it says uh, accounting profits, <coughs> sorry, accounting periods for corporation tax purposes. So when uh, a company is making their accounts, they can make their accounts for 12 months long, they can make their accounts for six months, nine months, whichever they prefer. Uh, or they, if, they, if, they, if they want, they can make the accounts for you know, more than 12 months. So basically what I mean to say is in corporation tax, we divide the, you know, we can make the accounts basically in three different ways. One is short period of accounts, which is less than 12 months. One is normal period of account, which is 12 months long. And another is called long period of accounts, which is more than 12 months. So one is normal period of account, exactly 12 months. One is longer period of accounts, more than 12 months and one is shorter period of accounts which is less than 12 months. So if it is normal period of account 12 months long, that's fine. If it is shorter period of accounts, that's perfectly fine. We have to pay the tax for nine months if it is, for nine, if it is a nine months long accounting period. However, problem arises when it is more than 12 months. So if it is more than 12 months, maximum we can make, a, make an account is for 12 months. So say for example, if it was uh, 18 months long, then what we do is we'll make two accounts. One is for 12 months, and the second one will be for remaining months uh, in excess of 12 months. So if it is 15 months long, first 12 months, another three months. If it is 18 months long, first 12 months, and another six months. So that's what it says in accounting profit. Companies pay a tax according to accounting profits. If the um, period of accounts prepared by the company is more than 12 months, then the period is split in the first 12 months and the remainder months. Now, as you can see in the, uh, just beneath that, so it is uh, exactly the same thing which I uh, just told you. Now if you come to the uh, next page on page number 80, this is self-assessment, no self-assessment. Uh, we have already seen the self-assessment for individuals, however this is the self-assessment for companies. So when do they have to submit the rat return, uh, you know, will, will there be any penalties and all that. So basically it is a self-study thing, however I will just quickly go through with you. So it is returns, now you know at this level what the uh, income tax or corporation tax or whatever return is. Return basically is a detail of the income sources and all that. So you will have to fill the form. If it is manual, you can uh, fill it manual or if it is a computerized one, uh, you can fill it computerized as well. All right. So it says return. The return is due for filing on uh, or before 12 months after the end of accounting period. So you will have 12 months uh, to which the return re uh, relates. Failure to do so will res result in penalties as follows. So if your return is up to three months late, and if it is first time or the second time, then you will have to face a penalty of 100 pounds. However, if it is up to three months and it is third or subsequent consecutive failure, when it says consecutive failure, it means you are continuously failing to submit the return on time. So when it is third or consecutive failure, then it will be five times higher than the normal penalty. So normal penalty for first and second consecutive failure was 100 pounds, and for third and consecutive, uh, th third and uh, subsequent consecutive failure, it is uh, 500 pounds. 
Likewise, if it is uh, more than three months and up to six months, the penalty is double, 200 pounds. Whereas in the other case, third and subsequent consecutive failure, it is five times higher. This time it is going to be 1,000 pounds and so on and so on. After that, it says uh, uh, companies must keep records uh, for six years uh, from the end of accounting period. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, how to calculate the corporation tax? Payment of corporation tax. Now, if it is a large company, large company means that the company who has profits of, uh, you know, too much, 1.5 million, or in other words, you can say a company who is paying tax at the uh, standard rate, higher rate, which is 20%. Now, a few years ago, um, the tax rates were different for different companies and different levels of income, and then we needed to adjust it as well. If you remember from your F6 studies, if you have recently appeared, when I say recently, it means a couple of years, obviously you, can't, you haven't sat it uh, last uh, sitting. So you might remember that there were different things. But however, it has been very, very much simplified now, uh, the corporation tax. So there is only one uh, standard rate uh, of uh, corporation tax, which is 20%. Anyway, so if it is a large company, it will take uh, 1.5 million, and that is the you know, formula to calculate it, divided by one plus number of subsidiaries. So 1.5 million divided by one plus whatever the sub number of subsidiaries, subsidiaries are. Say, for example, it has got two subsidiaries, so it will be three. So what? Uh, 1.5 million divided by 3 because one is it itself and then other two subsidiaries will also be added and when I say it's subsidiaries it means 51% uh, or greater than that so taxable total profits plus gross dividends uh, on the left side if you see uh, taxable total profits plus gross dividends however we must exclude the dividends from uh, our subsidiaries in that Right then. After that, it says large companies are required to pay corporation tax in installments. Uh, if it is a large company, so you will have to pay the corporation tax in installment uh, because you will have a larger uh, corporation tax liabilities. Then you can pay uh, tax in installments. The way to pay the tax is corporation tax divided by n multiplied by one. Now, n corporation and CT here means corporation tax, and n means number of months, and it will be divided by three. However, uh, if it is the first year that your company is a large company, um, and if it is a um, if it is if it is your first year that uh, your company is large company, and it wasn't large, the, you know, the previous years, uh, then you don't have to pay by instalment unless your profit exceed ten million pounds. Right, and it says uh, interest is paid by company. Uh, if it is a, you know if it is underpaid however if it is overpaid then HMRC will pay you back and you know that that HMRC is uh, you know they're not very good in repaying interest they pay only half percent where they charge three percent official rate of interest now just look at the middle uh, column please it says large companies for 12 months accounting period um, quarterly installments now, if your accounting period is for uh, 12 months long, if your accounting period is 12 months long and it is a large company, then you have to pay installment like that. Whereas on the right column, it says for less than 12 months accounting period. So if your accounting period is less than 12 months, then you will have to pay the installment in other way. Just look at the first one, which is the middle section, a middle column for 12 months accounting period quarterly installment so first installment is on the 14th of the seventh month in the accounting period fair enough we know that if it is 12 months long so seventh month in the accounting period we know that it is easier so from the start of the accounting period till the seventh month so the first installment is on the uh, 14th of the seventh uh, month second installment is on 14th of 10th month third installment is 14th of uh, of the first month after the accounting period so accounting period has ended and then you know the after that uh, 14th of the first month after the accounting period that is our third installment and the fourth installment is going to be 14th of the fourth month after the accounting period when i say fourth month after the accounting period it means 12 plus 4 that it is going to be 16th month right 
All right, then if it is less than 12 months accounting periods, so you will have to first you will have to calculate the first installment. So first installment will be 14th of the seventh month from the start of the accounting period. So basically it is exactly the same way like we have seen on the middle column. Uh, after calculating the first installment, if it is less than 12 months long accounting period, calculate the first installment, then go back to calculate the last installment. Now last installment, it says final installment, which is the balancing payment. 14th of fourth month after the accounting period 14th of fourth month after the accounting period so if your accounting period is less than 12 months first you have to do is calculate first installment then go back to calculate the last installment then come back to calculate the second if there is fourth if there is third as well then calculate the third as well right i hope you got me so first you have to calculate the first installment then go back to calculate, uh, I mean, go and at the end uh, and uh, calculate the final balancing payment. And then if there is any second payment required, you can make the second payment and third if there is any. So first payment we have seen, final payment is 14th of uh, fourth month after the accounting period. And uh, maybe one second, I forgot to move it. And subsequent installment, if you look at the subsequent installments, uh, it says 14th of the month which is after three months interval of the previous installment so if it is you know first installment was on uh, the seventh month so the sec second installment is going to be uh, after three months so it means 10th month 14th of 10th month like that now because it is uh, less than 12 months long so there might be less than uh, 10 months right so there uh, in total there might be less than 10 months so that's why it says after every three months interval subsequent payments will be made subsequent installments so first you have to do the first installment then last installment and if there are uh, if you know they need any more then you can make the uh, the difference by rule of subsequent installment which you can see on your notes after that it says small and medium sized companies uh, for 12 months in account, uh, accounting period less than that you'll have to pay the tax liability uh, nine months and one day after the end of the accounting period and uh, these things compliance check discovery assessment determination appeals amendments of uh, errors penalties for late notification are exactly the same like we have seen in our uh, chapter number 15 uh, which was on uh, self-assessment right now if you uh, come to uh, page number 81 uh, it says goodwill now just like the way we deal with a uh, depreciation which is for tangible assets for intangible asset something called amortization is charged now depreciation is not allowed expense so it is added back to the profits for taxable purposes and in the same way we deal with the uh, amortization as well so amortization will also be added back right so that is the way to calculate the amortization Right, so after that, it, the, it says uh, gains or losses arising on the goodwill are recognized for tax purposes on the same basis they are recognized in the accounts. So it will be uh, for, uh, you know, um, for goodwill profit and loss, uh, in order to recognize the profit and loss on the goodwill, uh, we'll, have to do, uh, we'll have to take the sales proceeds and deduct the net book value uh, from that, and which means that it will be taxed as trading income instead of the capital gains. So you don't have to pay capital gains tax on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll be paying uh, income tax, trading income. After that, it says patent box. Now, in the UK, the UK government says that you know you can start business. It is good for you. We will give you some benefits. However, if you're doing the business at big scale, you know you're doing business quite well, and you're doing some research as well. And after doing some research, you have registered your business patent. Uh, you have registered your patent and by use of that patent you are making your sales right now you are making your sales by use of these patents which you have registered now if you're doing that then HMRC will give you some benefits because you have researched and you have registered your patent and you are either you know selling it either you are giving it on the lease to someone else to use your patent or you are generating some income out of your patents so in both cases uh, that will be uh, you know taxed at different rate now as you can see on your notes it says a few uh, a new scheme has been introduced in relation to patent profits in order to encourage companies to develop and exploit patents 
The broad effect of the scheme is to tax profits arising in respect of parent uh, in respect of patent at a lower rate, rate of corporation tax, which is uh, half of what the normal rate is, so 10%. Uh, this scheme is available to companies that carry out uh, qualifying developments in relation to patent and is optional. This scheme is optional. And obviously it is optional, but obviously everyone will have to I mean, everyone will say that I want to opt this scheme because you have to pay tax at the rate of 10%. And uh, then it says the scheme, is, uh, the scheme is applied to all profits relating to exploitation of patents and royalty income uh, arising directly from the patents. It also applies to proportion of the profits on the sale of products where patent has been exploited within its production process. Now, just beneath that, if you look at the last sentence here, it says in finance, in financial year 16, only 80% of the patent profits are taxed. Please delete this line. It's not 80%. Uh, it is no longer relevant. So in financial year 16, only 80% of the patent profits are taxed. Please delete this one. At effective rate of 10%, that's perfectly fine. You'll have to pay tax at the rate of 10%. However, 80% thing is no longer relevant, so just delete it. And after that, it says uh, transfer pricing. Uh, within the big companies, there are different departments. So one department is making the product, and then they are transferring to another product. But all the different departments are making their own accounts. Now, when a department has made the product, they are making their own accounts. When they transfer this product to uh, you know, department B, they are making their own accounts. So they will assume, they will write down that we are selling this product to department number B. Now, when it is gone to department number B, they will, you know, obviously they will process it, and they will process it, and in them processing cost, they will include the purchasing cost as well, uh, the price at which they have bought from department number A, right? So what big companies does that uh, they sell this product to their other department at the higher price. So when they sell it at the higher price, the second department is uh, second department's cost is going to be lower. Uh, sorry, uh, cost is going to be higher because they are purchasing from the other department at the higher price. When department B's cost is going to be higher, then they will have to pay less tax because they will have less profits, right? So in order to avoid that, HMRC says that you can't just sell at whatever price you choose. You have to take the market value when you are selling within the departments. So that's what uh, transfer pricing says, and it is, uh, is anti-avoidance uh, legislation. So the transfer pricing and uh, legislation restrict the freedom uh, for groups, uh, for group companies to buy and sell goods or services at whatever price they may choose. There is anti-violence legislation which requires a profit to be computed as if the transaction had been carried out at arm's length, which is market value, and not the price actually used. Right? So that's what the transfer pricing is. Now these are the things that are just the theory, so you, you must know it. And however, there isn't any calculation. So where there will be any calculation, I will tell you. And it will be mentioned here anyway. Right. Research and development expenditure. So if you are going to start a business, now you might start your business in six months time, but you have started uh, working on it. So you are doing some research. So when you are doing some research, you are uh, incurring some expenses on that. Now, them expenses on uh, research and development, if, if HMRC thinks that these are qualifying research and development expenditure, now whenever you are going to start your business, then you will have some profits. Now, out of that profit, this research and development expenditure cost will be deducted, obviously, in the normal cases. Now, HMRC says that not only you can deduct that actual cost, but you can deduct some extra cost as well on research and development expenditure. So when you're deducting extra cost, which means it will lower your profit, so you'll have to pay less tax because you'll have lower profits. So it depends on if your company is a large company or a small company, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the benefits are different. So first one is uh, uh, research and development as relief for SMEs, which are small and medium-sized entities. So research and development ex uh, relief for uh, medium-sized entities. R&D relief for SMEs is given by allowing the company to claim 230% of the expenditure. 
Now, when you say it's 230% of the expenditure, say, for example, you have uh, spent uh, 100 pounds, you have spent 100 pounds on uh, qualifying research and development expenditure. Now, you will deduct that 100 pounds, but you will deduct extra 130% of 100 pounds as well. So, you will deduct extra 130 pounds as well. So that's what it says 230%. You can say 230% of actual cost or actual cost plus extra 130%, whichever way you say, it, both ways it is correct. So it says in the notes, claim 230% of the expenditure as deduction instead of the actual cost or actual cost plus extra 130%. It is exactly the same way. So you can deduct that cost. Now, it is beneficial for the company if it is going in the profits. If the company is already in the profits, that's perfectly fine because it will, this cost will reduce their profits so they will pay less tax. What if the company is already in the losses? So, I mean, whatever cost HMRC is giving, whatever relief HMRC is giving in shape of cost, that is no good to the company, is it? Because it will reduce the cost, so it will basically increase the losses which is no good to us for now. It might be useful in the, in the future years when I set off against future profits, but because my company is out of cash now, my company is in trouble now, so I need cash. So that you know, extra cost which I'm deducting is no good for me uh, at this time. So that's what HMRC says, that if your company is in the losses, then you can choose a second option. So in that case, HMRC will give you cash so that you can reduce your losses or uh, pay your debts. So if a company that qualifies for uh, SME research and development relief makes a trading loss, uh, it may claim a tax credit which will entitle it to an immediate repayment. The credit is 45, uh, sorry, 14.5% of lower of uh, trading loss itself or 230% of the uh, qualifying research and development. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is lower of these two, 14.5% 14, 14 of both of them. So whichever is lower, so we'll take 14.5% of the loss or 14.5% of the 230% of the expenditure, of, which are qualifying research and development expenditure. Whichever is lower will take that one. So in this case, if your company is in the loss, they will give you some money. So that is for uh, small and medium sized entities. Now look at large companies. What would be the benefit to the large companies? Now large companies get the same relief, but the treatment is a little different. So they will get 11% tax, 11 tax credit. So which means that uh, they will also get the relief. Now the way their relief works for the large companies is a little different. First what we do is we'll take the taking. So whatever our profits are, we'll take, that, uh, we'll take them profits. Now within them profits, what we add is whatever the expenditure we have, uh, you know, whatever the 11% of the expenditure are. So first we will add the 11% of the actual research and development expenditure into the profits. So we'll first add that 11%. Then we will deduct the actual expenditure which we deducted, uh, which we incurred on research and development expenditure. After that, we'll calculate whatever the net amount is. We'll calculate the tax liability. Cal after calculating the tax liability, we will deduct that 11% which we have added earlier, the same amount, we will deduct it out of the tax liability. Now you might think it is exactly the same way, so if we delete both of these things, adding here and deleting, uh, adding here and deducting here, so if we do not do both of these things, it will be exactly the same way, the effect is no, no good. Uh, it is not right because uh, you, I, I hope that you can appreciate the fact that although we are adding it here, but see, we are adding it in the profits. However, we are deducting it out of the ultimate liability which we have to pay, HM pay to HMRC. So it is good for us because although we are adding it here in the profits, but we have calculated the liability, out of that liability, we are reducing that liability with the same amounts. So it is beneficial for us. It is not the same thing. Right? Now we'll do a question on that yeah, so that you can understand this uh, large companies F, you know, research and development expenditure better way. If you come to qu question number 34 of your uh, BPP exam kit, please, and uh, we are going to do, now um, it is not a past exam paper, so you won't be able to find it in any other exam kits. It is only in the BPP exam kit. It is just a practice question. If you come to uh, B part of that, it's just worth three marks. So it says, uh, 
GPLC is a large company for the purposes of R&D. In the year 31st March 2017, spent 500,000 pounds on qualifying R&D, has taxable total profits before taking into account R&D expenditure of 4.5 million. Calculate the corporation tax payable by GPLC for the year ended 31st March 2017. Now just pause the video here and uh, try to have a go at it because I've, I've shown you how to calculate it. So it is, uh, you know, I've just told you anyway. So just pause the video and try to have a go at it. I'm, I'm just going to cancel the sc shared screen and uh, as I will do it on the board now. Just pause the video if you want to do it. Right then, so what were the profits? So profits were 4.5 million. So 4.5 million are the profits. And uh, then we'll have to add that 11%. Uh, so add tax credit. Tax credit was 11% of actual expenditure which we have incurred on research and development expenditure. It is five hundred thousand pounds, so half a million of that, right? So that will be added in here. So whatever it is, let me grab my calculator. So five hundred thousand pounds into eleven percent, fifty-five thousand pounds. So it will be added in here. So 55,000 pounds plus 4.4555000, right? Now on this amount we'll have to pay tax at the rate of 20%. At the rate of 20%, uh, hang on, sorry. Uh, first we have to deduct the Sorry, first we have to deduct the expend expenditure as well, actual expenditure. Actual expenditure were 500,000 pounds. So less uh, research and development expenditure. Research and development expenses. And they were 500,000 pounds. After deducting these expenses, 4555, five, five, zero, less 500,000 pounds. It is going to be four zero. Five, five, triple zero. Now on that amount, we'll have to pay tax at the rate of twenty percent. So twenty percent tax. That is going to be eight one one triple zero less. Now I'll deduct the same amount which we have added earlier, as I told you earlier. So it will be 11% of uh, 500,000 pounds. That is tax credit. And it is going to be 55,000 pounds. So see, we are adding it into our revenues, in a, into our profits, but we are deducting it out of our tax liability. So the eventual uh, effect is going to be beneficial because we are deducting it out of our uh, tax liability. So the net amount is going to be £756,000. Right? So I hope that you have already done it. If you have done it right, that's good news. If you haven't done it right, that's perfectly fine. You can redo it. Alright, so that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next video and we will continue with our... Corporation tax. Thank you very much and goodbye.